Consider the combination of resistors shown in the figure below. Find the equivalent resistance between point A and point B. And B, if the voltage is 41.9 volts is applied between points A and B, find the current in each resistor. The so first thing we got to do is reduce all of these down to one equivalent resistance. So uh, the equivalent of the first two, the 12 and the 6, so we're looking right here at the 12 and the 6. The equivalent of that would be, so REQ1, we'll call that the first equivalent, is equal to uh, 1 over 12 plus 1 over 6 to the negative 1 power, so the inverse of that. So that's going to equal 3 over 12. The inverse is going to equal 12 over 12 over 3, which is equal to 4. And so then REQ2, so we're looking now at the 4 ohm and the 8 ohm, we'll reduce that down to an equivalent resistance is going to equal uh, 1 over 4 plus 1 over 8, which is going to equal 3 over 8, or uh, 3 over 8, the inverse of that is going to equal 8 over 3, which is equal to 2.667. So now to make an equivalent resistor in a series, so we have uh, REQ1, REQ2, and then this 5 ohm, we just add them all together, and so it's 5, it's literally 5 plus 4 plus 2.667, and it's equal to 11.667. That's the resistance, the, the equivalent resistance in this circuit, so 11.667. And now that we know that, we also have the voltage, we can find the the amperage, the current flowing through at point A, at point B, and so if you look what the current is going in at point A, it splits off here and here, but then it comes back together right here, so the current going in right here, and the current right here, and right here are all the same. So if we find the equivalent current, so it's it's uh, delta V over R equals I, and we'll call it I1 because it actually splits off in a couple places. So it's equal to I1, so delta V is 41.9, 41.9 over 11.667, and you should get that the current, the equivalent current, I1, is equal to 3.591429. So we can put 3.59 right here. And then to find the rest of the currents, we can use Kirchhoff's rules. Well, first we'll start with the junction rule. We'll say I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. And so I'm just calling this part right here I1, and I'm calling this I2 that goes to the 12, and I3 that goes to the 6. And so if I wanted to solve, say, for example, for I2 going through the 12, then I2, I2 is equal to I1 minus I3. And then we can use a loop rule, so a loop rule right here to say that the, the sum of the changes of potential are equal to zero. So that would mean that um, if we were, let's say, let's just say we're going clockwise right now. So I, so I, uh, I2 times R2, um, and that would be a negative, plus I3 times R3 is equal to zero. So I just have to add I2 R2 to the other side. So I get I3 R3 is equal to I2 R2. And then I can solve in terms of I3 by dividing by R3. So I3 equals I2 R2 over R3. And then I just plug that in right here and solve for I2. So when you plug that in for, uh, for I3, you should be able to factor it all out and you'll end up with the equation I2 is equal to I1 over 1 plus R2 over R3. Where R2 is the resistance for the current you're trying to solve for and R3 is the resistance for the, uh, the other current. Now I want to show you a trick because and you can use the same exact equation for the, the other set. So uh, what you'll end up getting is uh, for the 12 ohm resistor, it was equal to 1.197143. For the 6 ohm, it was equal to 2.3944286. For the 5 ohm resistor, we already said the amperage going through that was 3.591429. Uh, then for the 4 ohm, 
The 4 ohm is going to equal the same amount that the 6 ohm equals. So the 4 ohm is 2.394286, and the 8 ohm was 1.197143. And so you, um, how did I get the 6 ohm? I just used I1, because I had already solved for I2, so I1 plus I1 equals I2 plus I3. And so I'd already solved for I1 and I2, so I could just solve for I3 by simply subtracting. Now I want to show you a way to actually do this um, that I think is easier. So what happens is if I have this resistor and this resistor, then I can find the, the voltage that went through the two of these. So if I find the equivalent resistance, so 1 over R1, let's call this R1 and call this R2, 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, the inverse of that, is going to give me my equivalent resistance. And if I multiply that by I, it gives me delta V across that resistor. Now delta V right here and delta V right here is going to be equal. The voltages are equal going uh, whenever, whenever it gets split up in a parallel. The voltages change whenever it gets broken down in a series. So right here, the voltage going to R1, the voltage going to R2 are equal. So I can use this equation as my voltage and I can just divide so delta so I is equal to delta V over R so I can just take this equation I can divide it by any one of these R's so R1 so if I want to find I1 up here I divide this whole thing by R1 now the principle in all of this is that if I want to find any equation so for example if I want if I want to find um, if I want to find the I2 I just take the current times the equivalent resistance on the parallel circuit and divide it by the resistance that I'm looking at for that particular current and if I wanted to find R1 I just change this to R1 and I find I1 and this is actually something that you could use for problem number four but explaining it on with, with number four would have taken more since I would have had to drawn out I would have had to explain a lot more just to get to the to the same result but this this uh, paradigm is the total current times times I over R1 plus 1 over or 1 over R2 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 dot 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 to the negative 1 power divided by R whichever number you're looking for and I hope that this result feels kind of intuitive and the reason I think it should be intuitive is if you look at a at a let's say we have a power source right or let's say this is A and this is B and I have these resistors in parallel these resistors in parallel and they so whenever the current gets up here it has to decide which of these three to go to so if this is a really high current it kind of forces it to some of more of it to go to these two and if these are if this is a, an extremely low current right here then more of it most of it wants to go here but it can only it has to be split up evenly so there has to be a ratio there has to be a ratio that it follows and that ratio has to add up to 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 um one basically so x over whatever x over y has to equal one whatever the ratio is and that ratio is simply it takes the larger resistors into account because it says that we're looking at the equivalent resistance and dividing that by the resistor that we're looking at hey thanks for watching make sure you check out my blog the link is down in the about section of this video and on the blog you'll find cool stuff like other videos for the same chapter. And you'll also find uh, little download links where you can download calculators to uh, basically just punch in your numbers and solve these exact problems. So you won't even have to watch the video if you don't want to. The last thing I want to say is if you leave comments on YouTube, of course I will get around to responding, but I'm much faster if you leave them at the bottom of my blog, right down there. Enjoy your day.